All right, we're live. I believe we are live on YouTube and we are live on Facebook and we are talking. Um, let me find my, my microphone here. So we're talking short circuit current ratings. This is a 15 minute tech talk. And um, uh, so how we do the 15, how I do the 15 minute tech talk, how we do, how I do. The 15 minute tech talk is um, I'm going to get into presentation mode. We're going to talk about short circuit current ratings. That is what SCCR stands for. We're going to do that in 15 minutes, hopefully. Um, and we're going to start here shortly. So let's get this over to presentation mode. All right, here we go. Uh, so 15 minutes on short circuit current ratings, and I'm going to hit the clock right over here in the corner. You're going to see it, uh, and it's coming up right now. 15 minutes is on the clock, and away we go. All right, short circuit current ratings. The picture that I'm showing right now on the screen is a um, is HVAC piece of equipment with a disconnect. That little soldier is sitting there with its arm up, ready to be pulled and put it in an electrically safe working condition. Uh, this equipment will have what we call a short circuit current rating. Uh, so that's a that's an important distinction to remember, and that's what we are here to talk about. This. Three, two, one, zero. Yeah. Oh. So that's what happens Three, two, when you exceed one, the short zero. circuit current rating of a piece of equipment. So basically, just to give you the layout of what's going on here, where that little star is right down there uh, at the bottom, that's where the fault is. The fault is not occurring inside the equipment. It's actually occurring outside of the equipment downstream. And what the, this, uh, this piece of equipment is basically not able to withstand the magnetic forces of the fault current flowing, passing through it to go down to that uh, where the party's happening, right? So uh, current is a you know, bunch of electrons just heading to wherever it is that you're sending them and they're party animals and, uh, and, they're, and they're lazy. They wanna take the path of least resist resistance. So this video illustrates what happens when you have exceeded the short circuit current rating of a piece of equipment. Now, the National Electrical Code and what I'm using is um, the, the 2020 version of the National Electrical Code and Article 100, I don't believe this changed from previous editions. Um, just looking at the uh, at the definition here, I know certain things changed, but I don't believe that uh, the definition in Article 100 for short circuit current rating did change. But it's the perspective symmetrical fault current at a nominal voltage to which an apparatus or system is able uh, to be connected without sustaining damage exceeding a defined acceptance criteria. Now, a couple key points of this definition I think you should be mindful of. The first is symmetrical fault current. When we compare a, an equipment's interrupting rating or a short circuit current rating, we're not looking at peak values. We're looking at the RMS symmetrical fault current value, which is what we usually calculate in short circuit studies. The uh, what we will do when we evaluate equipment, when we put them through UL testing and we and we test per UL 508 or whatever standard that that equipment has to be tested to based upon the type of equipment it is, we will conduct what you call, uh, we'll conduct that short circuit current at a, a specific X to R ratio. So we'll establish the, the angle uh, that we uh, will, will, of current, to voltage that we will put into the system and we try to pick the worst case. So what you would wanna do is you wanna calculate the symmetrical RMS value, but you'll wanna calculate the X to R ratio. And if you wanna know what that is, I have a whole session on short circuit current uh, calculations. You'll wanna watch that video. I'll try to put a little link to it somewhere on this screen as for after we publish this. The other thing is defined accepted criteria. So what we know is that when you apply a, pers a product within its short circuit current rating, if it, ex if it sees a very high fault current that is within its short circuit current rating, that doesn't mean you're not going to have a problem, uh, you're not going to have damage to the equipment. 
you will have damage, but you'll, you won't exceed an acceptable criteria, an acceptance criteria, which may mean that you're not going to have a shock hazard. You're not going to blow the doors off. You're not going to hurt somebody physically or provide that shock uh, opportunity. So be mindful. Those are two uh, 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 key aspects of uh, an SCCR rating. Let's go that way instead of that way. Now, a short circuit current rating is not an interrupting rating. What I'm showing you here is an overcurrent protective device. In this case, it's specifically a fuse. And you'll look, it has a 300,000 amp interrupting rating. That is this device's capability to stop the flow of current, not let current pass through it. An overcurrent protective device is going to have a stopping power. It's going to have an interrupting power, and it's going to have an interrupting rating. It is not a short circuit current rating. Circuit breakers have short circuit current ratings as well. So this breaker uh, has uh, at different voltages, at 240 volts, it can interrupt 65,000 amps. At 480 volt, it can interrupt 35,000 amps. So the higher the voltage, the lower the interrupting ratings. Now, uh, with the fuse, this is a 600 volt type of device. Uh, and it can interrupt 200,000 amps at 600 volts or 300,000 amps at 600 volts. Uh, and, and, and lower voltages, it will have a better interrupting rating, but we just don't label it that way uh, because hopefully you're not applying it beyond those voltages or current interrupting ratings. Now, another way to explain short circuit current ratings is, uh, remember, it's the fault current is happening here downstream of the equipment. Um, so that's a, 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 an important aspect is that the fault is downstream of the equipment, not in the equipment, right? So uh, when that, this, uh, this uh, industrial control panel lets the current flow through it, all of those parts and pieces have to hold it together. And in this case, I've got 35,000 amps of calculated bolted fault current, RMS, and I have a rating of 50,000 amps, I'm applying this product within its ratings, it's not going to achieve an unintended rapid disassembly in the field, as my buddy Dan Neeser uh, likes to describe it. Now, how I typically will describe short circuit current ratings, I relate it to a weightlifter. And if you think about a person who is bench pressing, a, bench, uh, a person bench pressing is gonna lay down on a bench, you have the weights, which are shown here, that they're gonna be pushing up and down, right? And who else do you see in that picture? The spotter. Now let's relate this scenario. What's the spotter's job? The spotter's job is to make sure that the weightlifter doesn't lose sight of that weight, that they don't come down crashing on them because either it's beyond what they can possibly lift uh, or, or they've, they've done so many presses with it and they can't get, it, get that, that weight up or and they don't want it to come down on them. So their its job is to protect the weightlifter. Let's relate that to electrical distribution equipment. The weightlifter is, say, your industrial control panel or your panel board, your switchboard, whatever the piece of equipment is that's going to let current pass through it. The weights are the magnetic forces from the, the fault currents that pass through it, and the spotter is the overcurrent protective device that is there to protect that equipment. Now, I may be rated, I may tell you, I can, I can bench press 500 pounds when, when spotted by Lou Ferrigno. Now, Lou Ferrigno's the Hulk, right? And you go, well, that's okay, that's 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 a that's a big feat, Tom, because Lou's gonna do all the work. You're not even gonna touch that 800 pounds or 500 pounds. True. Uh, but now if, if Lou goes to the bathroom and I look down, I lay down on that bench, I look up and I see somebody else standing up there looking down at me saying, Hey, you know what, Lou's in the bathroom, I'm gonna take care of this for you. I'm not listed and rated to handle 500 pounds with anybody other than Lou. So when you see a short circuit current rating on a piece of equipment, especially if it's greater than 5,000 amps or 10,000 amps, depending upon the equipment, it's going to get you to that higher value based upon not only an overcurrent protective device, but quite possibly a specific overcurrent protective device. Now, what the overcurrent protective device is doing for you is it is reducing the amount of current, the peak magnitude, so you'll see that very high peak value is what you would see if there was no overcurrent protective device. You're seeing six cycles flowing here, okay? So I got six cycles of fault current flowing and um, if without an overcurrent protective device and that first peak value, that real high value up there, 
is going to be the magnetic forces that I'm going to experience or my equipment is going to experience if I let that current flow. So the peak current gives me magnetic forces. The amount of duration, that amount of cycles that I let flow is going to give me heat. So I have both magnetic forces and I have heat going on with regard to how much current I let flow through a piece of equipment. That little red blip that you see there, that little red blip is actually the only current that is seen by the equipment if I have a current limiting device operating in its current limiting region. So if I have a fuse, a current limiting fuse in the picture, I'm, I'm reducing the peak current, which reduces the magnetic forces, and I'm reducing the amount of time I let flow, which reduces the amount of heat. And the overall RMS current is much lower than what would have flown if I did flown. What would have passed through that equipment if I didn't have an overcurrent protective device. Now, the best way to understand this is pictures. And we love to blow things up to, to prove a lesson. So I'm going to show you two videos. One is, here's what happens when I have no overcurrent device. I let one cycle of fault current flow. One cycle. I have 90 foot of 2 watt conductor, which is pretty stiff. I let 26,000 amps flow for one cycle through that conductor. And this is what you get. Now that was pretty powerful. I'm gonna play that one more time for you. So that first, that one cycle of current, I had a peak current of 48,000 amps. Now remember, my RMS current was 26,000 amps. My peak let through, that first half cycle, hit 48,000 amps. And the energy that I let flow for one cycle was 15,700,000 amps squared seconds. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of current and that's a lot of heat. And that's what it translates into with regard to SCCR of the equipment. All that, all of those parts and pieces, terminal blocks, uh, um, uh, compression fittings, the, the starter, the breaker, everything needs to be able to withstand those magnetic forces. Now I'm going to show you what happens when I put a current limiting device in the picture. The exact same circuit, but a current limiting device that's going to only let that little red blip pass through the circuit. Watch right here. It's a very slight movement. I'm going to let you see that one more time. Now, what that fuse did for you was took all the pressure off of the system. My peak current went from 48,000 down to 10,000, 10 48.1 to 10.2. My heat that I generated, that I squared T, went from 15,700,000 down to 127,500. That is a severe reduction both in magnetic forces and in heat delivered to the system. Your spot, that's your spotter doing the job. Now, here's three more videos of a misapplied piece of equipment. The short circuit current rating of this of these three videos, uh, of the equipment in these three videos is 5,000 amps. I'm going to increasingly, exaggeratedly misapply this product. So watch it. The door didn't come off but it didn't, it did leave a dent. Now this one here, this, this one, this door flies 20 some feet in the, in the lab. Let's watch this one. Now that's what I call an unintended rapid disassembly in the field.
And that's what I call an unintended rapid disassembly in the field. So you sit down and say, how do I fix, how do I, how do I address this? I want to know the rating of my equipment, know the capabilities. I want to know what the available fault current is that could possibly pass through it. And I want to make sure that the fault current is less than the short circuit current rating of that equipment. Because if it's not, I could get a result like Three, this. Two, one, zero. You let the smoke out. You don't want to let the smoke out. Okay. Equipment will have a short circuit current rating. In this case, short circuit current rating is 200,000 amps. And it tells you the maximum fuse size. In this case, this is HVAC, short circuit current rating is 5,000 amps. And it tells you what fuse or breaker sizes to use. This, in this case, the short circuit current rating says that if you put a, a you get 10,000 amps, if you put a type BWH, I'm sorry, if you put a type BW main or 22,000 amp rating, if you put a BWH. Now, you get the rating because of the overcurrent device, but it's not because the interrupting rating of that device is 22 or 10K. It's because of its capabilities protecting the downstream equipment. And this equipment, it goes on to tell you that additional or replacement breakers shall be of the same manufacturer and type and shall have an interrupting rating equal to or greater than the other products that are in that piece of equipment. I've, I've exceeded my 15 minutes, but I've I'm, I'm got a few more slides. This is, gives you a 200,000 amp short circuit current rating um, and, uh, and at 600 volts, but it, you'll see on the equipment, it tells you exactly what overcurrent device to put inside. So this chart, I like this one because this is right out of UL508A and it shows you that not only does a panel board, a switchboard, a motor control center, and all these other products have short circuit current ratings, receptacles have short circuit current ratings, terminal blocks have short circuit current ratings, conductors will have short circuit current ratings. Anything that will let current pass through it will have a short circuit current rating and proper selection of the overcurrent protective device to provide the proper protection is critical. This case here, I have a power distribution block downstream of a fuse. That fuse is there to provide protection for that power distribution block so it doesn't in, in achieve an unintended rapid disassembly should high fault currents flow. Why? I'm going to take those fault currents on, off. That power distribution block will not see that peak current. It will never see the current that it's rated to handle. Think about that. I can say this, this can handle 200,000 amps. Does that say that that power distribution block is going to handle 200,000 amps? Heck no. That power distribution block is only going to see what that fuse let, lets pass through it. And what you saw earlier with the sine wave and that little red blip, that's the only thing going to pass through that's going to go through that power distribution block. Busway. In this case here, this is a, an unfilled out label. When, when protected by a whatever ampere uh, class of fuse, so it could be, say, a, a 400 amp class J fuse, for example, or a cutler hammer type, uh, whatever circuit breaker rated for no more than 400 amps. The busway is rated for use on a circuit capable of delivering not more than so many RMS symmetrical amps at a specific voltage. So these labels are going to tell you not only what the available fault current that it can handle, but what overcurrent device will get you the rating necessary for the proper application. And I'll tell you what, you don't want to lay down on that bench when Lou Ferrigno's in the bathroom and let whoever else it is say, you know what, I'll be your spotter. If you don't know the capabilities of that individual and you're not tested with that individual. So key takeaway, know your ratings, know your short circuit currents and compare the two. Your available fault currents have to be less than your short circuit current rating. If they exceed the short circuit current rating, you have a few options. Replace the equipment with a properly rated piece of equipment. Change the components out inside that equipment to get it increase the short circuit current rating. In some cases, when there's uh, no dynamic device inside, uh, that like a circuit breaker, uh, that's going to also try to open, you may be able to put a fusible switch in front of it and use the up, over, and down method. But be careful of that. Talk to your local busman or Eaton sales engineer or application engineer to understand the proper use of the up, over, and down method. All right. We did it, and we did exceed our 15 minutes. But you know what? That doesn't mean we're going to call it an 18-minute tech talk. It's still a 15-minute tech talk. You don't like it? What are you going to do? Sue me? I guess. Maybe. I don't know. All right. So that's our program.
That was a 15 minute tech talk on short circuit current ratings. I've got links down below to help you navigate this, uh, the waters of short circuit current ratings. There's also another video in there that talks specifically, and I do my analogy, we, we did that at the Experience Center. Um, so hopefully you like that one. Uh, and, and if you do, great. If you don't, sorry about that. That's the way it goes. All right, so out there, hey, Robert from Omaha. Awesome, thanks for dialing in, Robert. Hopefully you guys like the 15 minute tech talks. Uh, uh, something new I'm trying, I just did one yesterday. This is the second time I've done it. I'm trying to perfect it. Um, you know, again, um, I, I exceeded my 15 minutes this time, but that's okay. Nihad, thanks, buddy. Uh, I, you know what, uh, Nihad, I might do one every day. I don't know. Uh, it, it'll probably be random. I'm thinking around five o'clock, I might uh, just take car 15 minutes out and do a tech talk. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be working with some of the boys up in Warrendale, and I just talked to Matt Hussey, and I know you and I are going to do one on GFPE, so we're lining up some some two-hour programs that maybe we can give some PDH certificates out on. But uh, I'm sort of liking uh, putting these shorter pieces together and maybe uh, peppering those in each day. So we'll see how they do. You know, hit the thumbs up if you like this thing. Um, uh, comment down below if you want to specific, if you think I can get something done in 15 minutes, uh, which, I, you know, I thought SCCR, this one might be good enough but uh, for 15 minutes, but apparently I went over a little bit. Uh, put some notes down in the comments. I'd really appreciate to hear back from everybody uh, uh, on this as this video gets out there and, and lives on my YouTube site. So leave some comments down below. Send me an email. Send me a, send me your, you can contact me through, I believe, uh, through YouTube uh, or whatnot. So, you know, contact me. Let me know what uh, other topics you want some short 15-minute uh, tech topics on. Uh, let me know if you like this platform. Let me know if you like the, uh, the concept here. Awesome. Thank you, Nihad. I appreciate the feedback. Thanks, Mr. Edu <laughs> thanks, Robert from Omaha, Mr. Education Power. I appreciate the feedback, and thanks for dialing in. Thanks for for uh, you know. Remember, subscribe if you're not subscribed and you're checking out this video. Hit the hit the subscribe button. Check the bell because you'll be notified when I post some more of these, and I am going to do more of these uh, as moving forward. So, uh, and hopefully, I know uh, tomorrow I'm doing a practice session with uh, some of my guys up in Warrendale. Uh, so we're gonna be trying to do some collaborative things to bring some of the resources within Eaton uh, to you all uh, and answer your questions. So we're gonna, we're gonna be testing some things out tomorrow, testing the water, and I think next week, we are probably going to have a tech topic in that's gonna go longer than 15 minutes and it'll be a cool Q&A session with some of the smartest people that I know in the industry. So stay tuned for that. Um, like remember to subscribe, please subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss anything and, um, look forward to talking to everybody tomorrow or whenever reach out to me, whenever it is. So stay safe and by all means, stay healthy. And thanks again for tuning in. This is Thomas Dimitrovich, a part of the Eaton technical social distancing network. And I'm signing off for this 15 minute tech talk. Take care, and I'm going to hit the stop streaming button.